What's going on traders? Andrew O'Connell here with Pristine Capital. What an epic market bounce that we had off of Fed Wednesday. Jerome Powell delivered the goods for us today, team. This is the bounce that we've been anticipating and that we have been positioning for. Let's dive into today's Fox scores and we'll talk about it. S&P 500 finished the day up 3.05%, massive bounce. The NASDAQ QQQ finished up 3.38%. We had the IWM small caps finishing up 2.67%, Dow Jones up 2.82%, and the ARK Innovation ETF was up 5.13%, our big winner for the day. The market pretty much opened up right on the lows, and the market was very weak from the start of the day. Then as the day progressed, and we had the Fed press release, followed by Jerome Powell's testimony and then Q&A, the market really just short squeezed to the upside. We had a huge volatility crush, let's go. We had the VIX finish down 13.09% and breadth overall was positive. My trend model flipped from a negative one to a plus one. So with that said, I positioned a little bit more aggressively and added some exposure. In terms of the Fed countdown, this is what we were looking at. And we've been previewing this the past couple of sessions. We've been watching these videos and really just getting expectations as to what could happen and what the possibilities were. We ended up getting the 50 basis point rate hike and we also got the balance sheet runoff. It's gonna start in June. And this was yesterday's data. You know, quickly moving to a maximum runoff pace of $95 billion a month. That's exactly what the Fed announced today that, hey, we're gonna be running off 95 billion a month, but we're gonna do it gradually. So they're gonna work their way up to 95 billion. I believe it was over three months. So overall, nothing that the Fed said was novel, nothing was new, nothing wasn't already in our consciousness. And for that reason, when you have everyone that's hedged, all their portfolios, everyone's buying put options, which we noted with the elevated total put to call ratio that we were seeing every day we knew that everyone was kind of positioned on one side of the market and if powell didn't deliver a haymaker the market could do exactly this look at this heat map nice green action across the board and our sectors same exact thing top performing sectors today we had an energy of 4.15 percent Home builders did very well, and I actually got long a home building stock. And we'll talk about that shortly. The semiconductors were up 3.88%, and the solar energy stocks, they were up 5.16%. This is definitely a group to keep an eye on, and we can look at that chart in just a moment. Style factors, also same thing, nice green action across the screen. Let's take a look at our S&P 500, just so we can see, hey, after this big epic bounce, where does that leave us? So again, trend models at a plus one. And look at this, this teal downward trend line that we've been watching for a couple of weeks now, we broke it to the upside. So we were talking about this earlier today within our chat. And I mentioned this to members that, hey, if we can establish ourselves inside of this weekly value where that'll trigger a bullish 80% rule. The bullish 80% rule, that's, once you establish yourself inside a value and you ascend into that value area, then there's a high chance you end up testing the other side of it, which is a move up to 4257. We got to that level and we even shot past it. So really good move here. And now we're inside of this monthly value area. So yeah, 4279 spot 25. Definitely a good level to watch for tomorrow's session. We also have this 20 day simple moving average that's trading just above us. Now I would imagine <clears throat> there's gonna be a ton of stop orders. Poor location shorts that are now getting barbecued. A lot of them, I'm sure the 20 day moving average is their line in the sand. So I think it is only fitting that we test that level and likely overcut it and stop out a lot of those players. Now I want to make sure the news that was announced by the Fed, was it good news? Was it like, oh my gosh, this is amazing, now buy stocks? No, it wasn't good news at all. The Fed's gonna be rolling off their balance sheet, but it was just, you know, given that positioning, a lot of these shorts have to cover. What I wanna make sure to do is not get intoxicated by this green price action. As the market rallies and as more of those shorts cover, of course, I'm gonna follow my trend model and my process, but let's say we get like a short covering rally, it lasts a few days, 
if from there, once everyone capitulates, then it turns right around, I'm not going to hesitate to, you know, stop out of my positions and or actually add some shorts. Remember that hedging trade that I had on that I made a YouTube video about it? I closed out for like a 58% winner. That could be something that, you know, I just re-add to the portfolio if the market starts to move into the upside and those shorts get squeezed. This is our NASDAQ, same deal. We're approaching this 20 day simple moving average. Russell 2000 is also approaching the 20 day and our dogs of the Dow, the Dow Jones, probably the same deal here. Yep, yeah, approaching the 20 day as well as the 50 day simple moving average. So in a year like this, when you have liquidity that is tightening up, it's very tough for the technical traders. The ones that are not really like in tune with market structure, what ends up happening is like, you know, the first couple of days they don't believe in the move, then they end up getting long a couple of days later or whatever when the market's overbought and they're basically buying when they should be selling and selling when they should be buying. So for me, it's super important and my trend model helps me capture this as soon as I see that hint of a turn. Like the other day, it flipped from negative three to negative one, if you watch yesterday's video. Now today, it flipped from negative one to positive one. By the time we get to plus three, if we get there, I don't wanna be like adding on more trades and like taking on more risk. You know, I wanna make sure that I'm ready to scale out, if anything. So let's take a look here. We can check out some of my trades for the day. All right, so BXC, this was a, a great trade. This is one of my better trades year to date. BXC, this is a home builder stock that we talked about in our pristine capital pre-market webinar. I was doing some scans as I usually do in the pre-market and I was scanning for companies that reported really strong earnings. Take a look at BXC. This stock was gapping up in the pre-market, met my criteria. So I said, hey, let me take a look at BXC. And what I found was astounding. Look at this, I'm gonna pull up the chart here. I laid this out for members. You know, this is our community discord. We have our charts channel right here. And I posted this one, BXC trade rationale pictured below. So I noticed BXC was gapping up in pre-market. And look at this, as of the pre-market, this company, this is super important. It had a market cap of $772 million. That's very small, right? Well, this company, look at their earnings. Q1 EPS, they announced $13.19 versus an estimate of $8.58. It was pretty crazy. Uh, and their sales, $1.3 billion beat a $1.12 billion estimate. But here's the kicker. Blue Link's Holdings increases their share buyback to $100 million, including a $60 million accelerated buyback. So imagine this, the market cap is 772 million and they're buying back 100 million dollars worth of their shares they're literally buying back you know one eighth of the company's market cap now what i also noticed is this is a very thin name there's only 157,000 shares traded per day so you factor in they have an earnings beat and there's going to be demand likely flowing into that stock right you also factor in our macro view, we've been talking about everyone's position bearish, the overall market could get a bounce. And then you add in potential buyback, that money flowing in. This one was kind of a no brainer for me. So I just dove in pretty close to the open. So I took BXC for 88 bucks. And yeah, this one ended up having a really nice finish to the day. This is something normally, I only show this to members, but this is every day I post my position log. That way there's like full transparency as to what I'm trading and like what I'm positioned in. You know, for me, that's super important. But take a look here. This is where I'm at at the moment. So BXC is marking at almost a 12% winner and pretty much everything. Yeah, it's all green across the screen for me right now. I also post, you know, how much of my portfolio is in cash versus how much is invested. And you know, these are all trades that on every single market recap video, we've talked through all of these. And I share everything publicly with you guys on YouTube. You know, the wins, the losses, you guys see it all. You guys are awesome. But yeah, so far today ended up being a really good day for us. And then take a look at this. So other position that I have open, uh, this is Box. Took this off of one of our pristine capital weekend watch list setups. Yeah, so this was the setup. This was from the weekend watch list. Put this one on yesterday, I believe. This one had a really nice move today as well. Really nice tight pattern and it emerged from it. And the other name that I did take an entry in was 10B. This is a software name and it's a cybersecurity stock. 
and a lot of these cybersecurity stocks really got hammered today and it looked like they were slipping into the abyss i saw that it started put putting in a reversal so i took an entry in this name see i got long this 10b also if you look at crowdstrike another cybersecurity name same exact deal put in this huge hammer candle and then palo alto let's see if that one yeah palo alto did the same thing see i took a position in one of those cybersecurity names and then the other trade that i did yeah i moved up my stop on my box to break even i got long 10b and then i had this triple leveraged s p 500 etf that i closed out for a winner and i closed it as we were running into resistance so yeah overall today ended up being a fantastic day which is good but when you have a good day like this it's important not to rest on your laurels for me like it's all about following my process okay my trend model's at a one okay i know what i'm doing in that market environment as soon as things start moving in my favor i want to be moving my stops higher all right let's take a look at some names that look pretty interesting heading into tomorrow so that way we can get some ideas so these growth stocks gitlab this one is trading right up to this monthly value or a high looks pretty good if we get a continued move tomorrow perhaps this one breaks out of value chrw this one was on one of my scans in the afternoon looks pretty interesting it is starting to break out of this consolidation lly this is another one of the names from our weekend watch list this one triggered i did not get the entry in this one so that's the other thing like i create all these trading plans that way we're ready to execute when the week comes but i don't you know execute on all of them it's good to have a bunch of these setups in your back pocket but uh yeah this was one it hit the trigger and it just moved right on through so lly looking pretty good mattel this was one i tried to enter yesterday entered a limit order and this one yeah this one also slipped by me really good looking stock moved right through that technical pattern and this one has had you know day two of its breakout looks really fantastic and then another one this one has been showing up on my screens for weeks now and I'm like, when is this stock going to break out? This is Dave & Buster's. It's a reopening name. And I got to say, this is probably the most interesting looking name here. And the reason why is because the price action is really tightening up. Watch, let's let's draw this out. Sometimes it's almost like, you know, stock chart art. Look at this. So look at the tightening. Like if we just draw a little trend line. Take a look at that. We're starting to tighten. And then even up here, you know, we're really just tightening up in a major way. So yeah, a lot of the supply in this stock, because remember when you're looking at charts, it's all about the supply and demand. A lot of the supply is getting chewed through. So now these dips, you can see this one was a severe dip, really big correction, then a smaller dip. Now we just had another dip and it was even smaller. So I'm gonna be honest, play looks fantastic heading into the rest of the week. This one, I'll probably draft up a similar play and this one definitely looks like it is on deck for tomorrow. With that being said, that about does it for this market recap video. Hope you guys all had a good trading day. And as always, I'll see you all tomorrow. Thank you so much for everyone for tuning into these videos. You guys are the best.